today we are going to talk about plate motion. So we're going to talk about both what causes seafloor spreading and our tectonic plates to move and what happens when the plates move and interact. Today we're going to bring full circle the theory of continental drift. Continental drift was really good evidence, it was a really great idea, it just missed a mechanism and today we're going to give a name to that mechanism and it's convection currents. Convection in the mantle is the rising of warm material, heated up because it's near the core. So it gets hot and it expands, and when it expands, it rises to the bottom of the crust. When it hits the bottom of the crust, it's going to spread out. It comes up, hits the crust, turns sideways, and spreads out. And this material, as it moves underneath the crust, there's friction with the convection current and the overlying crust. And that friction really is what causes our plates to move. The convection current moving underneath the crust causes the crust to move the same direction. Until that convection current cools off enough, it becomes more dense and it sinks back down in the mantle, closer to the core where it just warms up and this process continues. Convection currents is really what drives plate motion. Then the next question would be, what happens when our plates interact? And the short answer would be earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain building events. And we break these down into different types of plate boundaries, these different interactions. And the first one is a divergent boundary. Divergent means to move apart. So that's exactly what's happening in our diagrams. The ocean floor, the crust, is moving apart. It's separating. And this is seafloor spreading. So we're going to have the rising convection current. We're going to have a mid-ocean ridge, rift valleys, brand new ocean floor. And that's really a divergent boundary. An example of this in the real world might be the Atlantic Ocean or the Red Sea or even the Great Rift Valley in Africa. And we can't see one of these oceans open up completely in our lifetime, but we have snapshots of what it might look like. And the Great Rift Valley in Africa, continental rifting, is the first step. Africa is being torn in two. Most of Africa is moving towards the west, but the east coast is moving east on a different plate. So the continent is being pulled apart and thin, just like Plato. Eventually it's going to separate and start erupting basaltic material that's going to create a narrow ocean like the Red Sea. And the very last step would be a well-developed ocean like the Atlantic Ocean. Our next possible type of boundary are convergent boundaries. So when plates move together, and because we have two different types of crust involved, there's ocean crust and continental crust, we have several different types of plate boundaries potentially occurring. The first one we're gonna talk about is an ocean to ocean convergent boundary, where we have two pieces of ocean floor that collide and one of them will subduct. The one that subducts is always the one that is older. Older ocean floor means it's colder because it has more time to contract and condense and cool off. And that also means it's more dense. So older and colder and more dense, that is the ocean floor that's gonna subduct. When it subducts, it causes melting in the mantle, and that produces one of the primary features, which is a volcanic island arc. There are lots of examples of these volcanic island arcs, but Japan is one that pops into my head first. Moving on to an ocean to continent convergent boundary. Very similar idea here, where the ocean crust is now colliding with a continent, but it's still more dense just based on its, its composition. The ocean is made out of basalt, the continent is made out of granite, and basalt is more dense. So the ocean still subducts, it still causes melting in the mantle, and now we have a different feature that we call a continental volcanic arc. So the real world example would be the Cascade Mountains right here in the US, like Mount St. Helens, Mount Baker, Mount Hood, those volcanoes. Another feature is an accretionary wedge. And this is a buildup of ocean sediments that get cemented onto the continent. So as that ocean floor subducts below the continent, there's a lot of friction. And that friction actually kind of scrapes off the ocean floor, the ocean sediment, and it adds it onto the continents themselves. So in Southern California, this was taking place, and there's an entire mountain range called the Coastal Range that is made out of ocean sediments piles and piles of ocean sediments, large enough to be a mountain, but it's from the ocean floor. 
The last type of convergent boundary is a continent to continent convergent boundary. And both of these continents are buoyant. They float high in the mantle, so neither one is going to subduct, meaning there is no volcanism here whatsoever. But what does happen is a thickening of the crust. The crust slams together and it makes it very, very tall and very, very deep into the mantle. It makes it thick. An example of this would be the Himalayas, where India is still colliding with Asia and it's making the Himalayas grow even today. And like I said, there's no volcanism here because there's no active subduction. So the types of rocks you would get here would be mainly metamorphic rocks. The very last type of plate boundary is a transform fault boundary. And this is where plates are just moving past each other like cars on the road. They're just moving horizontally past one another and they do interact some to cause earthquakes. The number one place that we find these transform faults is actually on the ocean floor. Those divergent boundaries that are on the ocean floor like the mid-ocean ridge, they're not really, they don't curve, they're, they're more offset. So I, I mean that the divergent boundary is separated by some space but everything on one side of the boundary is all going the same way, and the opposite side is moving the opposite direction. But in these areas with an offset, the top would be moving one direction, and the bottom of that offset is moving in the opposite direction. And that's the definition of a transform fault right there, two plates moving horizontally past each other. We're gonna do a lot more work with our different types of plate boundaries. So please make sure to watch this again if you have to, take some really good notes and ask questions. All right, thanks.